Hey guys, I'm here at Propel Bikes in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm doing a video about e-bike classes. There are three classes, and sometimes it can be confusing, like what does that mean? What do you get with each of the different classes? All the reviews that I do at electricbikereview.com have a little a, a note, like this is a class one bike, or this is a class two bike. Some bikes can even be programmed to qualify for different classes, meaning they, they could go a little faster, or you could slow them down a little bit, you know, if you feel more comfortable for that. So I'm here with Chris Nolte, the founder of Propel. How's it going? Hey, how's it going? I really appreciate you letting me use your shop. I mean, you've got some awesome bikes around here. And one of the unique things about filming this in New York City is that uh, class two electric bikes aren't really allowed here. Um, so we had to, to dig around. This was actually a customer bike that um, had brought it in for, for some repairs and stuff. Maybe they think they'd like built this themselves, gotten a kit online or whatever. and. Yeah, it looks like you're you're helping to clean it up and, and get it working, but you're actually not allowed to sell this class here. Right, uh, class two is explicitly illegal in New York City. It's considered to be a motorized scooter, and if you can't register it, it's not allowed. Okay, right. okay, so yeah, I don't know the details of this person. Maybe they're from out of state or out of, outside the city, you know, that is allowed. New York's kind of the exception for this rule. Um, there are some bike paths in California and, and other places where throttle is just kind of frowned upon. Uh, but I, I still want to demonstrate how this works. So maybe we can power this thing up, Chris. Um, we got a battery pack right here. We got the little motor right up here. And then there's the, the throttle. So we just power this thing up here. And if you press the throttle, there we go. That's it. That's class two. And, and this is a really good example of class two because it's a kit. And some of the first electric bikes ever made, I, I think they, they were like this. It's like you had a bicycle. There weren't these really fancy designs yet, and, and people just added a motor to them. It was you know, simple, but, but some of the hazards is that you can accidentally bump that when you're lifting it, um, you know, trying to do some service on it. It's a little bit easier to get distracted versus holding on to the bars. This one's a trigger throttle, so you don't have that same issue of the grip being compromised, although I think it's a little bit shorter on this side. Sometimes we'll see um, throttle activated bikes where it's like a twist throttle. Right. And that can kind of compromise your grip. So a lot of times, you know, I say on my reviews, if it's an off-road bike, throttles can be, you know, not only because of the trail etiquette, but also because of how you might bump them. And, and if you're going down a hill, there are times where I've been slamming on the brakes, like oh, I need to stop and I've accidentally like, twisted that and now I'm getting more speed and it's just it's kind of dangerous that way so um, you know I, I'm not a hater of throttles in fact they can really be useful at times if you're carrying a big load or you need to get started if you have sensitive knees like I do it's fine but these days they have some really sophisticated solutions with um, class one and class three so let's get one of those okay so this is an example of a class one electric bike this is a high bike it's using a very popular Bosch performance line mid-drive they sell these all over Europe, all over the world, really. This is one of right. the most popular drive systems because it measures your pedal cadence. That's like turning the cranks. It measures the rear wheel speed with this magnet, and it measures pedal torque. So not only is it pedal assisted, but it's one of the most responsive pedal assist. And you really need that when you're out on the trail. You know, as we can see, here, it's a full suspension downhill mountain bike or kind of an all mountain. And uh, you don't want the bike to accidentally get out of your control if you're on the edge of a cliff climbing a trail or something. So this is very much working with you as a right. human. That's class one, that's pedal assist. So you've, you've powered it up over here? Right, so we, t we powered it on here. We have some, uh, there's, there's different assist levels. Um, mm -hmm. Right now it's in turbo mode, which is the top level of assistance. You have off, which is Riding just like a non-electric bike, no assistance at yeah, all. Just like a cycle computer at that point. That's right. And then Eco, that's just a little boost from what you're putting into it. And then Turbo is a, a little bit more significant boost, kind of getting you up to uh, kind of what a, a really fit rider can, can put into it, maybe a little bit above that. Well said. What, what happens when you actually hit the 20 mile per hour mark with this? So at 20 miles an hour, you receive no assistance after that point. Okay. Um, so up until that point, you receive assistance proportionate to your input. As you, you know, just mentioned, they're, they're, the sensing is very advanced on this system. It's using a microprocessor taking a thousand senses per second. Wow. And you know, really, it's the idea is that it's intuitive and it's it's very refined. So it, yeah. it's 
it's very safe because of that as well. Okay. Uh, like how, how do we demonstrate that? Cause the rear wheel needs to be spinning and everything. Like you have to actually, you, you need to get the bike going before the motor will even right. kick so in. Right. So you do have to pedal. You do have to put human power into this in order to get it going. It's not really under optimal conditions because generally you'll have a little bit more torque behind the bike because you're pushing your weight when it's in the stand is little resistance yeah but we can still get a sense for it okay. uh, if you notice here this particular system uses a smaller chain ring in the front that you might be used to seeing on a, a non-electric bike there's actually a reduction system in there uh, so when you when you turn the cranks actually this chain ring is rotating faster and it's rotating 2.5 times for every revolution mm. so this chain ring here is about a uh, no, it says it on there 15 to 20 50, 15 tooth, so that's basically about a, a 40, uh, 42 tooth uh, chain ring equivalent. Why did Bosch do that? Like, why don't they just have a regular chain ring? The idea behind this, uh, from my understanding, is just basically it puts a little bit less stress on the motor. The motor can operate at a higher RPM and they can operate more efficiently. Hmm. The Bosch system is one of the most advanced and the most efficient systems that exists on the market, and uh, that's that's one way that it's you know kind of evident so the conversion here it's not that's not the motor just doing all the work it's it's to say just like you have gears in the rear to make it easier to climb we kind of have a couple gears inside the motor making it easier for the motor to go right so it's it's known as a reduction gear so exactly in that, okay. in that way so, thanks um Can we so dim? we're, we're going to see this this is uh so basically we're rotating the pedals and it's kind of difficult to see exactly but What's going on is that is the motor is actually starting to assist as we um, as we pedal. It's I'm gonna try this with just a little bit more resistance, maybe just pulling on the brake a little bit. Okay. Um, just to kind of get a better sense for what the motor is actually doing. There, so you could kind of kind of see that and hear it. You could you could hear that a little bit, right? So you know I'm I'm pulling along. I'm I'm you know pumping on these very powerful brakes and the, the motor is kind of pushing along and, and it's simulating kind of what it might be like climbing a steep hill and that yeah. sort of thing yeah yeah okay so that i mean clearly as soon as you stop pedaling the bike stops right right so you know uh that's one thing that's a common misconception about uh, electric bikes or class one electric bikes that you know, old mopeds used to be that you have to pedal them to kind of get them going and then they just kind of keep on going. Oh yeah. But this is very different. It's, it's exactly proportionate to your input. If you don't pedal, you don't put any input, the bike's not giving you anything back. And it's critical that it stops when you stop because with a bike like this, I mean, you could go off a cliff or something. So they need, it needs to stop. It, it, it... Right. And it's great because you don't even have to think about it. You know, you just program the amount of assistance that you that you want uh, or how you know much extra boost do you want and you just set that and forget it and just mm. it's just like you got stronger like, legs uh, exactly yeah. you know yeah so I you know and again I don't want to you know freak people out the idea like you're saying is you pick a level that's that makes sense so if you're climbing and you're on a big wide open steep trail you put it at the highest and it helps get you there and then later you're on stuff that's a little bit more technical you take it down and then the assist backs off a little bit so right. it's it's really cool kind of like the bionic man thing you know where you absolutely turn yourself into a, a little bit more powerful and get out on those weekends and enjoy yourself so what's the the last i think the last class that we we want to talk about here is sort of new it's um class three it's still only paddle assist like this but it lets you go a little faster can you explain the weight thing you know we got into that conversation earlier like right how so the federal government has a law that they introduced in 2002 and it's hr 727 and basically that law was introduced to classify electric bikes as bicycles provided they meet certain criteria at this time these uh class three bikes were not really that popular and really most bikes that we saw at that time were throttle activated mm. occasionally you might have a very rudimentary version of pedal assist using what's called a cadence sensor um, since then it's become a lot more popular to use torque sensors along or a with combination cadence. yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. So, um, so basically the way that they measured if it's still to be considered a bicycle is if it can be operated without human assistance, a uh, 170 pound rider 
on flat ground going 20 miles, up to 20 miles an hour. Uh, the idea is that, you know, if you had a heavier rider, it might go a little bit slower. You had a lighter rider, it might go a little bit faster. It could be set just based on the limitations of the system. You don't necessarily need to have a physical speed limiter in there. Yeah. Um, since then, uh, there's been a lot more advancements in the technology and that sort of thing. Uh, as far as the consumer product safety, um, they they don't have a very specific uh, designation for pedal assisted bikes, so it kind of leaves it a little bit of a gray area. The class three, so it's kind of up to the states to define individually how these are regulated and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so what I hear you saying is, you know, in the past the motor, you know, they weren't even as advanced as this, and so they would kind of stop at 20, and now they limit some of them at 20, whereas this class three, what right. they do is using the same definition for a 170 pound rider on flats, it'll get you to 20, but if, if you pedal hard, it'll get you a little faster. So you exactly. might be able to go 25, 26 miles per hour. Right, and most of them are limited to 28 miles an hour. Part of the reason why they came up with class three and they used this designation of 28 miles an hour is based on the European designation of what's considered a speed pedelec oh, yeah. that goes 45 kilometers per hour. And the market's much more developed over there. It's easy for manufacturers to develop bikes specifically for the European market. It's kind of difficult for them to develop them specific for the US market because it's still pretty small. Yeah. As the market grows and as the regulations become a little bit more clear, we're gonna see a lot more clear we'll see more clear distinctions between these different classes. Okay, so we got the Strummer ST2. This won all kinds of awards. Um, I don't know if it was, was it the, uh, the Interbike Award or the... Yeah, the ST2S, I believe, won the Interbike Award. And the, the, both the ST2 and the ST2S, which is the ST2S is based on the same model, has yeah, won some awards in, in US as well as Europe. Okay, and part of it's, you know, it's look at this thing, it's, it's almost like a supercar with like really cool light up front, and it's got a USB charging port for your portable electronics. I think it even has GPS so you can track it and recover it. Right, Because right. these are expensive, right? Sure. This is like a $5,000 bike. Yeah, this one's actually uh, $7,000. They do have one, a model that's about $5,000. Um, so yeah, yeah they, they, they can be a bit pricey, but if you think of it as a transportation solution, something that you could replace your car with. Yeah. It's, uh, it becomes a little bit more reasonable from that. So this is a class three. I'm comparing it to a sports car in part because it is sportier. Again, it's saying if you work harder, it'll go a little faster. Right. We're not gonna just like cut off at 20, but you have to work to get it to go that faster speed. So this one actually uses a different kind of um, pedal assist. It has just torque sensing, so it doesn't have the cadence and some of the other stuff. It only listens for how hard you're pushing, and that makes it feel a little sportier. That's right. That's right. And uh, and there are some adjustments with that as well. And you know, basically, but it it has the ability to to provide a good amount of power. There on on this bike, there's three different levels of assistance. There's at this point, it's a no assistance. None of the levels are highlighted. Then you move into the first level of assistance which is uh, it's programmed somewhere about 30% or so. The second level, that's actually something that a user can program themselves as oh, to cool. how much assistance they want. They are still limited to 28 miles an hour, keeping in that class three, but they can adjust you know, how much uh, range they wanna get, so maybe they bring the power down yeah. a little bit and that sort of thing. That's a great point, because this has a, a really big fancy battery right here, but it needs more capacity because as you go above 20, you know, the, the wind resistance and the work you're putting in through that motor, it, you know, my understanding and my experience of testing these is that you drain the battery faster. Sure, <laughs> so absolutely. This is yeah. for your active fit, like commuter, you know, someone who's, and, and the other thing about it is you're only supposed to ride these like on the shoulder of roads or, or in the road, depending on the, the law. Depending on the, yeah, d absolutely. It's, it depends on the area, you know, different. California has introduced a, law this past year and well this year in 2016 clarifying specifically the different classes and where they can be used mm -hmm. i think the the thought is from the industry side that other states will kind of adopt similar sort of laws yeah um, but still most states are kind of undefined on this so yeah okay yeah i won't yeah. try to force anything here but it, it's interesting that we've adopted a lot of the technology from Europe where, right. where they've figured out things and now California is figuring out some things 
and other states are following following along. So maybe we can try to demonstrate this one again. This one has a a gearless direct drive hub motor, no gears uh, versus the mid drive. It did have some gears. It's it's super bulletproof. It's a lot quieter, and it even has regenerative braking. That's right. Is that right? Yeah. So. We'll try to demonstrate it. So let's give it a go. <laughs> you might you know, not hear keeping it. Keeping in mind again that the you know there's little resistance on here, but I think we still can get a sense that you know I pet a little bit, and the, the motor kind of jumped a little bit. You saw. Yeah. Uh, when you're when you're on ground, having resistance on the motor, it's it's really a different experience than when it's in the stand. But you yeah, know, it's something that we could kind of demonstrate that it's really proportionate. When you start pushing really hard on the pedals, that's at the point where it's actually going to provide assistance, and mm -hmm. it's and it's directly proportionate. It's kind of difficult to 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 hear or and to feel, but actually, if you push on the pedals just a little bit, you get a little bit of assistance, and then if you if you're pushing on the pedals really hard, you get a lot more assistance, yeah. and and it's yeah. directly proportionate. Again, it's something that you don't really have to think about too much because that's the same way that you would operate a bike you know, without assistance. If you push hard, you're gonna expect the bike to perform more, and yeah. you're pushing a little bit, you expect a little bit less from it. Well, I noticed that even when you were pushing hard, the crank had to turn half a rotation before the motor kicked in. Is that a safety thing? Right, so it, it definitely is, because the thing is, if you're sitting at a stoplight or something like that, and you got your foot pushed down on the pedal, you're ready to go, but you don't want the bike to do anything that you can't predict. So yeah. it, it, it does sense that it has to move a little bit before it actually gets going. Okay, yeah, yeah this, is, this is great. You know, we've gone through the different classes, done our best to demonstrate them here on the stand. I really appreciate your help. Um, you know, we've gone a lot more like granular with this, but it's neat when you've got the bikes right in front of you, you can see how they work. So Absolutely. I appreciate it again. We're at Propel Bikes in Brooklyn. Um, you've been doing a great job for years, Chris. I appreciate you showing me your other shop, and uh, I wish you guys the best. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Cheers.